What's going on, you nerds? This is uh, another podcast coming from Unibeam. Jonathan is Magnum and Durf. We're here to finish up our uh, Iron Man 3 podcast. Uh, why don't you guys say hello? Hey, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm great. What about you, Durf? What's up? Let's get rolling. Let's get this going. Let's get this bitch rolling. All right. So last time, uh, if you guys haven't checked out the last one, do that now. Uh, we talked a lot about Mandarin, and we talked a lot about Tony Stark. But now that we've finally seen the trailer and we've come off of our one-month hiatus uh, since the last one, we are going to be addressing everything we've heard and, and seen from the trailer. So who wants to get this ball rolling? Um, sure, I will. I'll, I'll go ahead and take charge in that. Um, man, so yeah, the trailer came out a month ago and um, pretty awesome, dude. I think, that, I think it's a good thing we even took a nice little break to uh, kind of reel it, I mean, like, get it all in you know yeah we've been able to digest it yeah if it, if it would have done a, a a podcast you know the day after or the day of i mean we would just would have you know probably wouldn't have even been able to speak on it but now that everything's kind of settled in it's good but um yeah man there's some pretty good stuff in that in that trailer uh i would say one of the highlights um definitely is uh what everybody's been worried about and what everybody's not worried about but more just into is all of iron man's armors oh shit yeah dude (laughs) like that was that was honestly one hell of a little finale to a trailer i mean you know i think everything marvel does with trailers is already you know fucking awesome you know whether it was last year's little 360 you know cam of the avengers and everything well now they totally sold us on all those armors you know that we're gonna see what tony's been up to between the avengers and this new film yeah so, uh, yeah, yeah I, man that's really what, what i wanted to get down on is we can talk about you know the armors first let's do yeah, it man i mean that's what everyone's most excited about and that's one of the reasons i'm glad we kind of took a a break from the the last podcast so we could like i said digest all the information but not only that um last week marvel just released suit after suit after suit and uh, we wouldn't have been able to tackle that in the podcast if we had done it any sooner. But the suit I'm most excited to see is the Silver Centurion, man. We're finally seeing that on the big screen. Oh, yeah, dude, that dude, that, that looks badass. It's a badass suit. Oh, I mean, it is totally comic book accurate, too. Oh, yeah. it's. I'm look, actually looking at it right now. i got a picture of it up right now. Sorry, I had to step out for just a second. What was that, guys? We're talking about the Silver Centurion, first suit. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that was the first one that was brought up. To be honest, man. Yeah. Uh, what are you thinking, Durf? Uh, what are you thinking about the Silver Centurion? Go ahead, Durf. No, Durf, oh, man. Durf. Yeah, I was, yeah, dude. I oh, want you to speak up. Yeah. It's your turn. I just wanted to see what y'all were talking about, so I could get in the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a great suit. Look, I mean, like Beauty said, I mean, it it's comic accurate. I mean. And there's a little less silver in it than the comic one, but I mean, it's still pretty accurate, and it looks badass. I mean, and it's a, what I want to know is what the enhanced energy suit thing for it. But I wonder what that means. I don't no idea. I mean, I don't know if it like puts out more energy or what. Well, um, I I, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you done or <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Oh go ahead. no, man, I I just want to just cap on what he's saying, dude. Honestly. Out of, you know, last week they released six uh, photos of the armors, you know, from head to toe, a good visual of them. And, and we've seen, uh, you know, little internet rumors of what these things are going to be able to do. And uh, I got to agree with Zerf, man. The Silver Centurion suit is uh, the most comic accurate, like, uh, out of all of them so far. I mean, like, even the color even the color of the red, you know, I mean, everyone's really used to the more bright Iron Man red. This one has a real dark red tone and i mean just even looking at it, the shoulders the chest piece design it's just it looks straight from the books man and i mean i don't know if it's just me silver centurion has a like a special place in my heart because it appeared the same month and year that i was born which is badass but i'm looking i mean to be honest that's just the look of the suit but i'm looking at some descriptions um of some of the suits and the, the silver centurion is going to be the mark the mark 33 and it says that uh, the Silver Centurion armor has a slight protective force field, which allows the suit to attract or repulse objects using magnetic polarity. The suit is capable of firing pulse cannons that build in intensity the further they travel. So That pulse cannon know. sounds a lot like an ion cannon from the comic books. Yeah, yeah. there you go, dude. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> See, I didn't read that, so I didn't know what the enhanced energy thing means, but that makes sense now. 
Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the suit is going to be, I mean, that's just one of the main suits, but yeah, dude, that was definitely the first one, but one of my favorite ones right there yet that I've seen so far. Well, now that you mentioned the polarity and the, and the magnetism, I'm kind of wondering um, what this suit's purpose is. Um, I'm not really. I don't. I don't really know what uh what combat situation you would need something like that in, unless you know, unless Magneto were part of the universe. But um, I'm kind of wondering just why what he designed this suit for. We know in the comic books it was supposed to be more of a, a space traveling suit, but <clears throat> yeah. I don't know about the polarity and everything, and the ion or the plasma cannons, whatever you call them. I'm yeah, kind of, I'm kind of wondering what what he designed the suit for. Yeah, I mean. To be honest, any one of these suits, you know, it, it looks like they're for honestly specific situations, not really a battle suit. Yeah, e each one of these, each one of these suits has a specific purpose, and I think we all know that. Well, n now you mentioned the force field thing. Maybe the force field's kind of inspired by what he saw with the cube, or Tesseract, excuse me, and the Avengers, where it had its own force field. Maybe that's what inspired the force field idea. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's meant to interact with the Tesseract. That could be true too. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, all right, let's move on to the next armor. I picked Silver Centurion. Why don't, you, why don't you guys pick one of the other armors to talk about? Go ahead, Durf. Let's uh, since it's right here in front of you, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Igor here. Yes, the Igor, oh, <laughs> quote unquote Hulkbuster, if we want to call it that. Yeah, I'll go ahead, and if we want to get technical, it's the the Hulkbuster prototype, I guess. Yeah. Like, if people want to say that, but, yeah. The precursor, right. Yeah. <laughs> the Hulkbuster prototype. But, I mean, Igor is an appropriate name. This thing looks hunched hunched over like it's ready to ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, so, what are the specs on this guy? Uh, reading it right now, uh, it's actually, I mean, the Igor is the code name. I guess these things are, gonna, as well as the mark, like, numerical borders are going to have, they're also going to have, like, I guess some kind of description before the, na the word suit, and then they're going to have a code name. So the Silver Centurion is, you know, the code name. This one is the, the heavy lifting suit. It's the Mark 38. Yeah, it's yeah, the Mark 38, known as the Igor. And, uh, man, the description that I'm reading on this is this armor actually wasn't designed for battle. It was created for heavy lifting and carrying heavy objects. So maybe a more so, rescue mission type armor. Yeah, and, I mean, of course, I think the, the one thing that is definitely got a lot of people interested in Igor is that was the very last shot in the trailer where that thing is just busting through a freaking wall so <laughs> yeah you know not sure if this one's gonna have any flight capability but damn well know that this thing is gonna be a strong fucking armor dude real quick now that you mention it um in the Avengers when Iron Man or Tony's talking to Pepper he said he literally did all the heavy lifting I wonder how long if this suit existed during the Avengers maybe that was the suit he was referring to when he did all the heavy lifting I didn't think about that. That's that's a good idea. That might be part of what he was doing with it. Yeah. Yeah. He might have built I mean, Stark Tower partly with the Igor suit. Who knows? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Why 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 just use machines? We can just make a badass armor and just use that, dude. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I will say that you know the Igor is it's a cool name, and I'm not really affected by the name, but I just it's weird because as everybody knows, you know, on on that's a, that follows comic book you know comic book movies and that follows them hardcore is. Uh, you know, this suit, when there was concept art released, it was the traditional Iron Man red and gold. Yeah. So, yeah, they deviated from that and did blue and silver, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are you thinking, Durf? Uh, I will say, I will say is, like, if this was, like, what they kind of said was the Hulkbuster suit, I was kind of worried because it looked kind of weird for a Hulkbuster suit. Yeah. But now they explain that it's the heavy lifting suit, I feel much... That's the word I'm for. I feel much more comfortable with it, I think. It, it feel like it's a much better suit for what it's designed, what it says it's designed for. Yeah, so like, puts you at ease a bit. It probably, it probably would be a very good design. Unless, you know, it's a, probably a prototype, maybe, like yeah. John was saying, but uh, it's a pretty, a pretty cool suit. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is the closest we'll ever see to a Hulkbuster armor. I mean, we've said that it's, it's kind of the precursor to it. But um, I don't know if there's ever going to be a situation where it's called for to have a Hulkbuster suit in the in the upcoming Avengers movies. So this might be the only taste that we get of something like that, and um, I think I can live with it. Yeah, I, I can too, dude. To be honest, I mean, even that like like I'll keep on going back to that last shot, you know, the shot where it's 
the Hulk, I mean, I keep on calling it the Hulk bus armor, but the Eagle armor is, is busting through a wall. Pulls a I juggernaut. Mean, yeah, like, it, pulling a juggernaut, yeah, but I mean, to me, it's kind of funny the way it's running and the way it's, the way it's like, hurling at you. If you want to put it on side, and I mean, this is just getting technical, but that scene in the Avengers where that Leviathan is coming right to, like, those people. Oh, yeah. And that scene where Hulk is just running right through. I mean, dude, they look almost about the same. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, yeah. you know, who know, I mean, like I said, I, I'm not, you know, rejecting the idea of, you know, you said what you said, Unibeam, about <clears throat> uh, Iron Man doing all the heavy lifting, making Star Tower. But, I mean, who knows if, you know, he got Banner to size up a little bit and then sized him up for a suit and then just made that, you know, kind of suit you know it's like oh man you know this could be used if you know maybe the hulk wanted to get into an armor i mean you know you could go different places with it i know it sounds cheesy but yeah you could go different places with it right right Dirk, any, thing, any last uh, ideas before we move on to the next armor the other thing they could do like they may not ever call it hulk buster but it could come into play you know where if he has to fight like in the next division he has to fight something big right like maybe I don't know if they have. Say they do Masters of Evil and he has to fight the Abomination. I mean, what's to say he wouldn't use a Hulkbuster type armor? Yeah, I mean, you okay. never know. The Igor suit could get damaged in this one, and he rebuilds it, aka it being a prototype, and uh, we see it come back and reprise as the Hulkbuster. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, all right, so Silver Centurion, Igor. Um, what's next? What's next on the list? Man, I'll go ahead and I know we're going out of numerical order, but I'd want to talk about, of course, one that's going to be really, really important and, and have a. It's been, it's been kind of popular is the um, is the Gemini. Oh, the Gemini. All right, yeah. Sweet suit. So, yeah, dude. <laughs> I think that's a lovely name too. I love that name. Yeah, it's uh, it's. I'm, see, I'm looking at it as. I'm not, Oh, here we go. The uh, the suborbital suit, which is actually the Mark 39. Yeah, and it is the Gemini. It is designed for otherworldly journey. It has an integrated removable booster pack and zero gravity maneuvering thrusters. Cool. So that just you know, and of course it's got a badass color color scheme to it. It's nice white and gold. And it's, I mean, the thing looks like it's a space armor, dude. I mean, yeah. you know, it, you know, reminiscent of the NASA NASA space astronauts. You know, it's got white. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have your your traditional Iron Man, you know, regular face plate with the red helmet. It looks like it's all a gold helmet on the top. So Yeah, it looks it looks know. sweet, man. Um, I think from what you described of its capabilities, uh, suborbital sounds a little inaccurate to me. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that would be below orbit, and I feel like if this thing is meant to go, you know, where a place where there's out without gravity... Um, it's more than a suborbital armor, and um, it sounds like they took uh, the Silver Centurion's capabilities and and put it into the Gemini. Yeah, yeah. So I think when it comes to the Gemini, it's not really based off of um, any specific armor from the comic books, the way the Silver Centurion is, and uh, possibly even the Igor suit. But the Gemini looks badass. Yeah, dude, no doubt. It actually looks like the gray parts on it kind of look like it's made of carbon fiber, which makes me think it's also meant to be a lighter suit and travel faster. Yeah. And I kind of noticed looking at it, it's got hexagonal scale, too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it does. I like it a lot. <clears throat> and I like I kind of like how it's um, kind of a matted look color and not really shiny. That way the faceplate really stands out. Yeah. And I can't really tell if those are supposed to be those boosters or where they on shoulders, maybe cannons. I'm not sure what those are. Yeah, I, I'm, I was looking at the same exact thing. Uh, luckily, I can look at John's avatar here that all has all the six new armors on it together. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what those things are on, on his shoulders. Can't tell. They're, yeah. they're, I'd say there's some sort of like engine or like a booster or something, or maybe a cannon. I can't tell for sure. I'm not really sure. I mean, if it's zero gravity, uh, maybe he's, it's meant to kind of have propulsion 360 degrees on the armor, you know, so he can move in any direction. That's, yeah, that's, really, that's actually very possible. It could be that, too. Uh, yep. But this is an armor. I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I love the look of it. I love the design. Um, other than that, 
I really have a whole lot to say. I'm just I'm in, I'm interested in seeing it. We uh, we definitely see it in the trailer when we see it. We hear Tony talking about backup, and then we see all the armors coming right uh, in the forefront of the camera, and that's one of them. I think you see t on the right. Yeah, hold on, let's see it. Yeah, so many screenshots. Hold on. It looks good. Yeah, it's on the left. Third from it's the left. Okay, it's on the left. Well, 50-50 chance, and I was wrong. Um, let's, mo let's move on. Um, I, I want to talk about my second favorite armor I've seen so far, and that's the Heartbreaker armor. This thing looks heavy-duty, badass, just basically John McClane in an armor. <laughs> this thing looks sweet, man. And, um, see, it says, totally your level RT, RT suit. Um, see, so it's like John Rambo, John McClane... <laughs> And Judge Schaefer got together and made a suit. <laughs> yeah, dude, and it's got some Terminator to it as well. Yeah, but, it's, it's, it's fucking badass. The segmented faceplate is the one thing that catches my eye more than anything. I don't understand why it's segmented like that. I mean, it reminds me of the suitcase armor a bit, but this thing, this thing's too heavy duty to be carrying around in a suitcase fashion. So I'm, I'm wondering why it, why it has that. Then it opens. Then it kind of opens up. Uh, so I'm trying to think of an instance where there was an arm or something open up like that. Maybe kind of. That's kind of how it opens up its segments instead of just one plate. Yeah, I just feel like if it's supposed to be so heavy duty, doesn't that make it a, a bit weaker? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely looks cool. It almost has like a domino mask look to it. Yeah. But this is this is one armor I'm really excited to see. This is the armor. If you guys watch the trailer and uh, Tony calls in for his backup, it's the one that's forefront, right in the center of the uh, of the camera. And this thing just looks like it could it could take anything apart. This thing is awesome. And that fucking super unibeam on the chest is yes. Yeah, I was just gonna touch on that dude. That thing is extra huge. And you see, I'm reading some. Uh, go ahead and read a little the little description on it. So this is uh, actually called the Artillery Level RT Suit, which is the Mark, Mark 17? 17. Yeah. Yeah. Known yeah. as a uh, Heartbreaker. Uh, it has an oversized chest RT, which can fire a powerful blast. The Heartbreaker can fire narrow or wide beams and can also generate a repulsor shield for protection. Hell yeah, man. This thing's got offense and defense. I'm loving it. Yeah, I gotta, gotta love it. Both good offense and defense. Yeah, we do. Um, again, not really sure which armor this is based off from the comic books, but I honestly couldn't uh, give a shit. This thing looks sweet. Looking at the face... Don't you say ultimates. No, no, not ultimates, not ultimates. Okay, good. It almost looks kind of like uh, the, guard, uh, the one he wears in the Guardians of the Galaxy comic. Yeah, the new yeah the new one. It almost looks like there's a cowl over uh, Tony Stark's armor. Yeah, and it also kind of, it's maybe based on the God Killer armor a little bit. Yeah, it could be. I mean, this thing's this thing's heavy duty. I don't, I'm not sure what it's for. Kicking ass is what it's for. Damn right. <laughs> I'm so excited to see all these armors, and um, and I'm really so happy because in the in the trailer, if you if you look and you have a trained eye for you know Iron Man, you see that. Tony Stark has a huge hall of armors below his um, his workshop basically now, and if you if you look, you see armor upon armor just piled down in um, along the walls, and that is something every Iron Man fan has been waiting to see because that's Iron Man. I mean, he's got you know an abundance of armors, and we fi we're finally getting to see it, and you get you catch glimpses of pretty much each one of these armors we're talking about if you uh, if you look at that that screen grab. Yeah. See, see, I got a screen. Uh, that was probably one of the things I geeked out about most in uh, watching that trailer. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe we're finally going to get the Hall of Armors. I mean, we've had something, you know, akin to it in the first two where we see him in the background of his workshop, but um, yeah. nothing like in the comic books where we see him actually descend down below the floor where there's all these armors lining the walls and... and I think all together we're getting 47 new armors. I'm not sure if all of them will be displayed, but uh, yeah. we'll know that they're there. And these are some of the, mo the more prominent ones that they've released. Um, uh, the I, I get the feeling looking at looking at the whole the whole armors underneath that floor there. Yep. 
I don't think that's big enough to hold all of them. I think he's got a bigger hall of armor somewhere, and I think they wanted to keep that on, on the down low so they don't spoil what it looks like. Maybe. I don't really know. I mean, I mean we don't we don't see a whole lot. We don't see a whole lot of the armors. We I mean it's a it's a quick shot. But who knows how how far down that thing goes too. That's true. I mean, this thing is at least 3 3 armors deep cuz I think you can see almost about 3 armors down. Yeah. So it's going to be great. Um the last two armors we have to address before we really get in the meat of this bad boy is um the shotgun armor and uh oh, what's that one with the claws called? The red snapper. Red snapper, yeah, the uh, inflamed vagina. The fish armor. <laughs> yeah. So John, I guess, is um, he's taking a quick, brief break. Uh, but we can talk about the shotgun armor and the uh, red snapper armor. The shotgun armor almost looks a little bit to me like um, the destroyer from Thor. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, it has a very similar um, look to it. It's an all all silver, almost like a Mark II. Um, the faceplate is unlike any other armor we've seen and there's no there's no mouthpiece there's only the eyes it almost looks like it's wearing some kind of shield over and yeah. i think it's supposed to be what the hyper velocity yeah from, it's called the hyper velocity suit yeah which is straight out of the comic books of course iron man hyper velocity but the armor looks nothing like this in the comic books so i'm, I'm wondering um why it's called the hyper velocity i wonder if this thing is made for speed that's what i'm thinking is Hyper velocity. It looks it looks really aerodynamic and sleek. It does, but it also looks a little bulky. But I mean, all the armors kind of have a bulky look to them. You got to fit a person in these things, right? It's, yeah, it's got yeah, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of know, what's the, kind of like hard edges to it. Yeah, it definitely looks like it can it can cut through the wind pretty well. Another thing too is like it's it's hard to tell in the lighting they have on it. Is it like kind of a silver or a blackish color to it? The faceplate looks like it has a little blackish to it, but um, from what I see in the chest plate, it looks a little more silver. Yeah, it looks kind of like a silverish gray or something, yeah. Yeah, and what's also interesting is that a lot of these uh, new armors have different shaped arc reactors or, you know, in the center of the chest. The Silver Centurion one has a little more squared off. Uh, the shotgun's a little more rectangular. Um, Heartbreaker's very round. Yeah. The Red Snapper kind of shares the shotgun's look. So... I don't know. Um, I don't know what to make of all that. It could just be design-wise. I don't know if it serves much of a purpose. Yeah, if it if it was black, I would definitely say it's kind of meant to be the stealth armor, but it's right. not really black. Yeah, actually, John was telling me that um, in one of the kids' coloring books that's been released for Iron Man three, maybe not a coloring book, but it's like a kids' book. Of course, they have, kids would have a kids' coloring book. Right? They have it. Yeah, they have an animated version of. Um, of a lot of the a lot of the armors, and one of them in there is there's actually two versions of a stealth armor in there. One of them I think is called nightclub armor, and the other one he says is called sneaky. And uh, yo, yeah, what's up, everybody? John? Yeah, sorry, man, had to take a little break. So, no problem. But I, I heard you con I heard some of the conversation you were talking about. Y'all got on the shotgun, right? Yeah, we're talking about shotgun, and then we're heading to the red snapper because now because we want we want to get in the meat of this bad boy. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so um. So you're talking about red snapper right now, right? Well, I think we're gonna finish up shotgun, um, real quick. I mean, I don't have a whole lot much more, much more to say about it, but again, I'm loving the different faceplate on it, and I think you know it being the hyper velocity, it's uh, it's meant for for speed and maybe even stealth missions. I don't know. Yeah, it looks it, it does look like it. It does look like it. I mean, I like the whole kind of dark bluish silver look that it has to it. You know, it's very different from the from the Mark II. Yep. You know, which, you know, of course we're going to see that in the movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm excited for that one, man. It's just, I, I don't know, like I say, all these suits, they have just a different, a different little spec to it, man. And it's, it's just going to be really, really sick, dude. Like, really sick. Like, I mean, I know you were talking about the Red Snapper. I mean, that one right there, uh, reading the, I guess the tactical little... Hold on, hold on. Before you tell me what it's about, I want to take a quick guess. Is this thing meant for subterrain... Um, venturing. This is actually, um, it says, uh, known as a red snapper. It's actually not. Uh, I'll go ahead and read it to you. The, it's, it's basically called the disaster rescue suit. Okay. Which is the Mark 35. All right. Uh, 
Known as the Red Snapper, this armor was designed to survive in dangerous places. The suit has extendable arms and claws, making it ideal, making it ideal for disaster rescue. So basically, you know, even though those arms are long and those claws are already as long, like already down to his his knees, yeah, uh, they extend. So I mean, let's say if you know you're trying to reach someone in a in a in a high place or you know without get trapped in a volcano. Yeah, something like I guess you know it, just, it looks pretty looks pretty out there, but it looks like something where you know if I mean the suit already looks a little bit bigger, so and which is I mean it's leading to believe that maybe some of Iron Man's bigger suits are not gonna have flight capability. Yeah, I mean I imagine this one would have flight capability in order to get to these disaster zones, but um, it probably doesn't have any weapon much weaponry on it. Yeah, it doesn't look like it has any anything. Yeah, as a disaster rescue suit, it probably doesn't have a lot of weaponry on it, I would say. Yeah. That's probably for the more uh, Superman-ish, you know, need to, need to save some people doing something like that. It's not really for firing weapons at the Mandarin or something like that. But Right. Looking at it, like, looking at the arms on it and looking at the the feet on this thing, it almost looks like they kind of, it was kind of inspired by the uh, forklift thing in Aliens. Yeah, this thing, yeah, I knew that reminded me of something. Yeah, you can definitely say that, I agree. I know what you're talking about, yep. So, I mean, again, I don't know which which armor this thing's based off of on the in the comic books. It might not be based off of any of them. It might be in a completely original design. But, um, you know what, the more the merrier. I want to see some fucking suits. Yeah, dude, I mean, yeah. like, like there's, there's a couple of more. I mean, I guess, have we covered the six that have been released yeah we've covered we the, we've covered the main six man i think we're uh unless you guys have any other words on it i think we're ready to move on to the next subject okay well i guess that there's there, there's i guess y'all were talking about both stealth suits the sneaky and then the nightclub i hate that that name the sneaky is so bad yeah. <laughs> it's so bad yeah well this what's that derf Oh, you know, you know, in the very end of the trailer, where all the suits show up and they kind of have that one where there's a bunch of suits lined up in the front there yeah yeah if there's one kind of on the far left that's like kind of a I can't tell if it's black man if I if I wasn't so lazy I would try and look for that screen cap but <laughs> <laughs> but uh that might be a stealth suit but I can't really tell well I one on the ahead, right that's like purple and orange yeah I saw that one too I saw that one as well is that the striker well, I mean, it looks like, and, and this is, I'm just saying, I, I picked up on a, on a site today that has uh, some more from that, from that book that Unibeam was talking about, from the animated book, and it's basically, it's going to be like a little, you know, kid's book, but it lists uh, all the armors, and the ones that we've listed so far, but the ones that we haven't listed is, there's the stealth suit, which that's going to be the Mark 15, and that's going to be, uh, the code name for that is Sneaky. And it's, uh, it is virtually Lame. invisible to enemy early warning systems. A chrome-colored coating on the armor can darken or lighten to match the environment. Yeah. So, I mean, that thing's probably going to have uh, some reflectors. And then Why can't you just version. call it the chameleon or something? I mean, why is it so lame <laughs> to call it the sneaky? Yeah. The chameleon would actually be kind of a badass for a name for a... Uh, for a yeah, would. That, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I would second that. That was, nice, that was a nice little touch right there, dude. What? I'm not going to lie. The chameleon armor. Yeah, it sounds a lot better than the sneaky, dude. I mean, it's starting to sound like Superhero Squad. This is my sneaky armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you have the version 2 of it, which you all are talking about, the black stealth suit, which is called the black stealth suit. It says, similar to sneaky, it doesn't have all the weapons and and is designed for stealth missions. It's known as the nightclub armor. So yeah. this won't be... That's the black suit, the black stealth suit. That's the one I'm assuming is going to be... Uh, also pretty comic book faithful, you know, to the black with the red unibeam and the, the red eyes. I'm really looking forward to seeing that one, dude. It's, yeah. It's like from the description, it's almost exactly like the one from the comics. Yeah. If I write one of the comics, like, had no weapons on it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, then, and then there's a couple other armors, actually, really quick, I want to touch on that John informed me about earlier today. Uh, the skeleton armor, um, it looks like it's got a black and gold color scheme, which looks pretty cool. Um... John's right. It looks a little bit like the uh, the suitcase armor being repurposed and repainted. Wait a second. Wait a second. What's that? Actually, that, that might be the armor on the far left of the sign because I think I see a little bit of gold on it. Okay. Well, 
You never know. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure we're going to get a good look at a lot of these. I mean, especially if they're releasing them um, in other mediums like toys and yeah. uh, stuff like that. That skeleton suit is the Mark uh, 41, and that's going to be the code name for that one is the Bones. It's the Bones, bones. On Okay. And then yeah. there's the other one that you sent me, John, that's actually in uh, that trailer with – not trailer, the poster of – Tony basically on that rock in the water, and there's one in the background that uh, basically looks unfinished, kind of like a uh, Phantom Menace C-3PO thing going on. Um, yeah. But it looks I – mean, I thought that would be the one you said you – know, like we both said it would be the Bones Yeah, I, I thought so too, but I'm still holding out that maybe that one is the uh, – God Killer? Uh, I, I, yeah, I think that that one's going to be the Asgardian Destroyer armor. Or the Thor Buster, which is something I really want to see at some point. I want to see a Thor Buster armor. Yeah, that would be dope. So, you got any more you want to list off, man? Oh, I thought that's something. <laughs> uh, I'm good, man. You want to? You, you can keep going. Yeah, well, uh, one of the things that's going to excite me is the uh, is the Deep Sea Suit, which is oh, what they're yeah. calling it. And that one is the Mark 30. The Hammerhead? And that, yeah, that's called the Hammerhead. And <laughs> it says uh, it's designed to, to be able to travel to the deepest parts of the ocean. And it can withstand extreme pressure and it is a high power. Hang on. This real quick. It can withstand extreme pressure and it has high power work lights to allow visibility in murky waters. Nice. So that one's going to be the hammerhead. And that one, looking at it, looking at a, an artist rendering, that one's going to have like a navy blue and like a really. I don't want to say like a. Like a vomit kind of green. It's got like a dark green. Like it's got a seaweed green. How's that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, like a little seaweed green and like and keep uh, that water it's motif. It's got a circular. It's got a circular arc right here, but it, it has that feel of a, a submarine. Okay, like and then the last one is the uh, is the striker, right? That's right, dude. Yeah, that's the striker. Yeah, and that's the Mark Twenty Five. Okay. And that's called the heavy construction suit, and it says it was designed to help with construction. So. Uh, it's powerful jackhammer-like arms can pulverize concrete. It can withstand high temperatures and electrical surges. So this one looks pretty intense, dude. This one looks like it's for a swole body, and it's really cool, you know, similar to the um, the, the Red Snapper at the end. They, basically, this thing's got, like, Wreck-It Ralph kind of, not hands, <laughs> but just, like, fists. All right. You know, like that, I, don't know what this, I don't know what that machine is that, you know, can stomp on concrete, like, really fast, but it looks like whatever those things are, they're going to be attached to Tony's forearms in that in that suit. Nice. So that's, I mean, those, those are just some of the, di I, I guess you want to call them just the disaster suits, dude. I mean, like, because that's what they're kind of used for. You know, the snapper is going to be if someone's in a little, you know, corner of a place, and then you've right. got another one that can break through concrete. Yeah, I mean, he's basically thought of every scenario. There's a suit for every scenario, and, you know, he's planning to utilize them all, I think. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's just going to be epic, dude. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's going to be the most cool is, you know, that I think, I think as much as there's, you know, a reason that he's made these suits, I think that there's also going to be the, a lot of uh, function for them in the movie, you know, right. like wherever that last fight is going to take place, you know, he'll probably control ones like, hey man, you know, get that striker on to go and pound that concrete in, or, you know, hey, yeah. you know, right. something like yeah. that. Perfect entry point to uh, move away from the armors and um, into... The movie itself. Uh, we've spent that's 32 minutes talking about the armors and how it went fast. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on into the actual movie. What we know uh, to be true now, because with Tony being synced up to all his armors at once, if he wants, um, he can strategically place any of these armors to do whatever they need to during the uh, finale or the climax battle, the climactic battle. Um, I think that's pretty cool, and I I'm. Really excited to see that, but uh, let's, we got a lot of topics to hit, so let's do it. Cool, man. Cool. All right, so, um, we talked about the Hall of Armors now. I think another thing that's on a lot of people's minds, uh, which I kind of wish wasn't, because it'll happen, and um, I think it'll be okay, but Pepper in the suit. Oh, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> you uh, know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not very... It's different because I haven't gotten complete, you know, I, I guess we as fans haven't gotten complete confirmation, like, of the, I guess, the technicality. Now, we've seen from a TV spot that basically there's a, I guess there's a moment when Mandarin's blowing Tony's house up, and Tony, before he is able to suit himself up, 
for protection, uh, for Pepper's protection, he basically controls the Mark 42 to be linked up to her. Yeah, and, um, and go, go she ahead, even saves his ass. Like, yeah, and in, yeah, in return, you know, as I guess a piece of the ceiling or something or some kind of, you know, rubble is going to fall on Tony, she covers him up and it falls on the suit. So... Yeah, so I think people can uh, be, you know, rest assured that Pepper doesn't have her own specifically designed suit for her. Um, Tony basically controlling his uh, armors with his extremis. Um, he he decides to be a hero and he uh, he puts the armor on Pepper instead of himself to save her. And um, she shows a little her- heroism by saving him as things are coming around him, coming down around him. Yeah, which in turn then she probably ends up getting out of the suit and then it's time for him to you know suit up and do his thing yeah which, which we see that's... we see in the trailer you know yeah that's just gonna be uh, that's just gonna be a really cool scene but yeah i've not gotten the confirmation whether she's actually gonna get a suit that is tailor-made for her yeah so... i don't think we'll be seeing a rescue armor at all in this movie there could be a hint toward it at the end but in the movie itself i don't think we're gonna be seeing a rescue armor yeah, yeah i don't think i don't think we will which is fine with me. Uh, yeah. I think another thing, too, that might be going on in the scene you're, we're talking about with the armor is maybe he has Pepper... I uh, see, I don't know. Well, actually, I don't know if that fits, but maybe he tells Pepper to get Maya out of it because... What well, the you know, hell is that? Sorry, man. <laughs> sorry. Um, it's all right. What were you saying, uh, Durf? Maya? Yeah, because, like, if you know she's in that scene... When like the place starts going, you know, it starts blowing up, and she's you know trying to get out of there too. So maybe he has Pepper get her out of there first. Yeah, and maybe he—that's when he gets in another armor. Yeah. I mean, it seems possible. Well, I guess it, it, it's just my opinion. I'm just—I'm—I'm I'm not gonna. Like I said, I—I'm I, comfortable if the rescue armor isn't there. But if it is, it is understandable. And I mean, to be honest, man, a, a lot of things are kind of leading me if it's not if it's not going to be in there at least they're going to set it up where not in another movie but just in the future there will be a hint towards it like you were saying i completely agree because then you know you have the scene where i mean of course there's like through the trailer we've seen the whole uh image where you know she's i mean we've seen the image uh we've seen the image basically where you have uh, aim which setting up all those guys, which I think they're all getting set up to get the extremist virus put in them. Yeah. But then, of yeah. course, we saw back in the teaser where there's a scene where Pepper is, like, you know, showing a little grimace on her face, you know, like some pain, so maybe she might get injected with it as well. And then, you know, that just leads me, that, that has me, like, you know, got question marks in my head, and then all of a sudden you've got that one little finale part where, Tom, or, I mean, that Pepper, she's turning around with an attitude, and she's in a bra. Yeah, so, I know, every I mean, uh, fanboy's dream there. Yeah, there you go. I mean, like, not only was that visually cool because, you know, she's, she's you know, gorgeous, but, you know, she's looking pissed off and she's all around explosions in her bra. So it's like, man, did this chick suit up herself? Or, like, you know, is, is she in some other suit? I mean, you know, so, like I said, man, if, if it's not in the film, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I know I can see a lot of fanboys raging over it. You know, I don't care that they do. I'm just saying I can see it. But, um, you know, that's just, that's my thoughts on it. Um, personally, I don't think we're going to see Pepper um, be injected with the Extremis. I think in the trailer when we see her kind of uh, strapped to that harness like all the other men are, um, I think, I think uh, one, Tony's going to save her before that happens. But two, I think there's something wrong with the Extremis virus initially. I think um, because in the comic books, obviously there's something wrong with it. Um, Malin kind of turns into this ultimate killing machine who breathes fire and you know has all this shit going on with him. But Tony, when he uses the extremis, he kind of inputs his own um, uh, equation, I guess you could say, into it. And well, I think I think that's what we see when Tony's kind of strapped to that strap down and he's about ready to be put with the extremis. He, I think, he uh, tailors the extremis for his needs to control his armor. You know. And uh, oh, yeah. initially, the extremist virus probably is no good. You know, it's it's on its first test run. Maybe even something akin to Norman Osborn testing the uh, Green Goblin serum too soon. But I don't think I don't think we're gonna see um, 
an extremist powered pepper. So, no, I, question about that scene where Tony's uh, getting is strapped down and getting the in the hospital or whatever. Yeah. Do we think where do we think that's at? Do we think that's in China, or do we think that's like at a hospital or AIM or something? Where do we think that's at? Um, I think it's probably in one of his own facilities. Um, because in the comic books, Maya kind of moves away from the extremist project and helps Tony out with it after right. he suffers. Um, critical damage in the suit from um, from shit. What's his name? Malin. Malin. Yeah. And um, so I think it's going to be something. I mean, I think this is going to be a lot more comic book accurate than we initially thought in the terms of the way things progress and the timeline that it happens. Um, I think we're going to see Tony getting the extremist suit obviously early on. Uh, right. At least, at least before the third act for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Because. I definitely think the attack on his house takes place way before uh way before the third act probably. Oh, I'm, I'm like, assuming that's, that's the end of act. act one yeah, yeah well, it's not. act one it, it, it's just a little you know kind of an extra i guess statement to say that you know this is this is really going to you know, and, and this is kind of going into like a, another subject that we're talking about the podcast like well, hold on hold on hold on real quick because um actually before we go into that, I want to kill another bird here with this stone. For sure. Um, in the in the trailer, there's a very prominent scene. It's quick where we see um, Tony put a necklace around Pepper, and um, that that necklace is is an extreme close up shot. And I'm thinking that necklace has something to do with Tony um, being able to key the armor into um, onto Pepper. I think that's kind of like uh, Durf was telling me before the podcast started. Like the wristbands in Avengers, where the armor shoots out and you know keys onto the signal, I think that might be what that necklace is for. Dude, way to go, Durf. That's actually fucking genius. I'm not gonna, dude. If you call that, if that's in theaters, I might just have to just walk out and just text you or something like that <laughs> because that's 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 actually that's actually an ingenious idea, dude. Like, wow. Like, it seems it seems too conspicuous in the trailer to not mean something like it, yeah. They close they have a close up of it. So I mean, it, looking at it now, not, like dude, you're right. Yeah, like, I don't think it's just a symbol of Tony's love. I mean, it could partially be that, but we all know Tony. I mean, he's always thinking. He's thinking ahead. Yeah, and I mean, at the same time, like from all the credits, I mean, from all the information from the movie, I mean, they're still making that that they're still making it that. Pepper is still the CEO, I guess. Um, yeah, which is weird, because in the end of 2, she said he, he can have his job back. Yeah, so it's just like, I guess, you know, but, you know, some more stuff that they're going to just, you know, include in the movies. They're going to find out, you know, did did she really relinquish Dark Industries? You know, has he got it back? You know, or, you know, whichever. So, I mean, yeah. but, dude, that's an actually a like, very, very good observation, dude. I would like, say, obviously, she's still involved with the company, because she did have a hand in designing Stark Tower, so... She yeah. had twelve percent of of it, of course. <laughs> she had she was having twelve percent of a moment. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome, man. That's actually a. I'm serious. Like my eyes are gonna get big if you know he's if there's something else to that, you know. And I get you know looking at it now, I could definitely see like you know that being a real surprise shocker. Like you know she thinks that it's just you know jewelry and. You know, everybody else thinks that it's just jewelry, but then when that attack comes, it's like, hey, signal that necklace, and then boom, you know, all the stuff just latches onto it. Yeah, that, that basically, the necklace is a symbol of his love, and his love ends up saving our life, you know, so... Nice. It's, it's good, well. it's good, and I want to, let's keep on Pepper real quick, because um, she's threaded throughout this whole movie. I think she's going to be a very prominent character, and um, we're going to go into Pepper and Aim now, I think, and we've read in Kevin Feige's uh, interview that... Pepper worked for AIM and Aldrich Killian before she worked for Tony, which is going to start the love triangle. Ah. So she, so I mean, it's conceivable that she actually knows Aldrich Killian. Um, she, what's the actor's name? I'm, I'm blanking here. Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. She knows Guy Pierce's character possibly before she knew Tony Stark's character. Um, Guy Pierce says that he was unattractive. He was, you know, he was attracted to uh, Pepper, but. She was never attracted to him, and now that he's gone through some kind of transformation, and now the CEO of AIM, um, it's starting a love triangle, and that's going to be fun. We've never seen Tony um, have to compete, basically, for for a love interest or for women, because he's always basically handed them on a silver platter. Well, we figured we'd, 
I guess we figured we might have because, you know, everybody knows that Pepper, you know, ends up, you know, going, I guess, going steady or marrying. I can't remember with, uh, with Happy. So, I mean. In the comic books? In, yeah, in the comic books, dude. Yeah, yeah. but then, then he gets killed off, I think. I'm pretty sure in the comics he gets killed off. Yeah, I think so. Um, which we might actually be seeing again in this movie, but I think we addressed that in the last podcast as a spoiler. That was a heavy yeah. spoiler, dude. Yeah, not, my bad, not guys. Us, no, not from us, dude. Come on. <laughs> like, honestly, you couldn't, like, you get, someone has to be dumb to not be able to call that, man. I mean, yeah. he's sitting there lying on a bunch of rubble all, you know. Yeah, but how stuff. stupid are we going to feel if we're wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Basically, dude. So, yeah, go ahead, he's. He's dying. It's cool. But, you know? <laughs> uh, let's talk about AIM then. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with AIM. And if any of you guys don't know what AIM stands for, it stands for uh, Advanced Ideas and Mechanics. Mechanics. And they were always kind of Hydra's little redheaded stepbrother. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're similar. Similar to like you know, a little technology, uh, more technology advanced, you know, but they do serve uh, serve the evil sides. Yeah. So. You know, that kind of brings me to a kind of a wild-ass theory I thought of since the last time we did our podcast. What's up? What if, like, AIM, like, in this, like, in this, they could still be work, you know, still be the weapons company or whatever. Yep. But what if they were a front, they were a front this whole time for HYDRA? Like, what if the big yeah. reveal in the end is that they are actually HYDRA and they are just a front? I think that's what yeah. AIM en- ended up being in the comic books. They ended up being kind of a, um, subsidized little group of like, Hydra, yeah, and that would really connect Hydra. well with Cap. Yeah, I know the design for Hydra, but like, that'd be a good way to bring Hydra back and tie it into the Winter Soldier movie. Well, yeah, maybe maybe Hydra evolved into AIM since uh, World War II. I'll tell you, that would be a really cool, cool thing, dude, if you saw the company in the same logo for AIM. You know, similar it's similar to that same feeling like when you were watching The Incredible Hulk, and they were going through, I guess, the, I guess the computer system... And you see Stark Industries' name, like, at the right. very beginning, yeah. during the credits of the Hulk. It would be really, really cool if you saw, like, the AIM logo, or AIM was given, uh, you know, Cap some problems in Cap 2. But that's another movie. But, I mean, it would make sense. I mean, like we said in the last podcast, um, we we saw we see something that looks like Captain America's shield tattooed on the back of Mandarin, so you, know, you never know. Mm-hmm. Like, the other thing, too, like, it, could, it could also be that AIM isn't Hydra, but maybe AIM has been working for Hydra the whole time, too. Right. Yeah. yeah, could have taken the leading scientists of AIM, you know, to to go ahead and you know develop weapons for Hydra, you know, technology or chemicals, whatever, man. But that's actually another great observation, dude. You're on it tonight. Yeah, he is. That's because I know it's the whole AIM Hydra thing is kind of complicated and it gets kind of weird, you know, who's on whose side and whatnot. But might be just a bit of intrigue. What was I'll that? Tell you what, man. As as long as as long as I see a little not, I know that they're not gonna have it. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying I know they're not gonna have it, but from we haven't seen anything yet. But I mean, I hope there's like a little bitty nod to those yellow AIM suits that they used to have in the books. The little beekeeper be look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had those little those yellow suits or whatever. I mean, we could maybe when they administer the um, the extremist virus, the people who aren't actually being administered are gonna be wearing something like that. You never know. I say that would be definitely badass, dude. I mean, you know, they've already gone as. I mean, I want to say they've gone as far, as faithful as they could possibly go, but just seeing that little nod, you know, that would be like, hey, you know. Yeah, the little beekeeper biohazard suits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It could be a little wink-wink to the fans. So. Yeah, it would be really yeah, cool. Which, which they always do, so. Yeah. yeah. But let's uh, let's talk about, I mean, we're on AIM. We see, um, I don't know if it's actually in the trailer. I don't remember, I don't recall it being in the trailer, but we see a, a still of Tony and Rhodey um, standing side by side, and Tony's wearing uh, an AIM shirt, and he looks a little beat up. Yeah, that's near the end of the trailer, yeah. Is that in the trailer? Yeah, it's near, right near the end. It's right before he calls for the suits, I think. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, you know, this, this kind of, this topic right here, and this, this whole thing that we're getting on, it, it honestly has me at a point to just bring up the whole thing, like, about Tony... I want to say, like, Tony, wherever that last fight is going to be, I want to say that that's, I guess that's AIM headquarters, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, maybe he's being held captive as well, or maybe, you know, because we see that scene in the trailer where he's got one glove as a repulsor and the other he's firing a gun. Looks like almost and like, then, looks, looks kind of like a flare gun to me. Yeah, it looks like a Uzi. I mean, I'm not saying an Uzi, but it looks like something different. And yeah. then, 
you know, we see, you know, if you, and I'm, like I said, I know it's already taken down, but that whole behind the scenes of phase two, there's like a scene where, you know, Tony and Rhodey are like, they're not in suits and they've got some gloves, man. Like they've, you know, so I don't I actually don't know what, you know, Tony would be doing in the aim suit, but I think it's probably, you know, to, to probably just get something to wear because either he was being tested on or, or, you know, they were, you know, beating him down, taking him off, you know, taking the suit off him. I, I honestly don't know, dude. Well, yeah, maybe the maybe he's got the aim shirt because the, the kind of leans more credence to maybe that's where he gets the injection from his aim. Right. Maybe that's where he gets the extremist injection or who helps him or whatever. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing as Durf. Um, I'm thinking that even though I I mean I really don't think that Tony's gonna go to aim to be injected with the uh, extremist virus because one I think that's that's too big of a risk on Tony's part. I mean. If you inject Tony with the extremis, they're by aim. Um, they're definitely going to be putting something in Tony that he's not going to know about and he's not going to want. I mean, they're obviously working with the Mandarin. That's going to give Mandarin a lot more control over Tony if he can basically cripple him through uh, whatever he's put in his extremist virus. <clears throat> but I think um, I think Maya Hansen might be doing it somewhere um, unofficially from aim within their within their base or their headquarters or something, you know? Because um, it's already been said that Maya Hansen and Tony Stark know each other from before Iron Man 1. So, you know, she might just be being a good friend. Well, yeah. I think, too, is, like, I, with the interview, they, I remember where I was from, it was from Kevin uh, Feige, Feige yeah. Feige, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I think it might have been from him. He said, the way he, they said that Tony and Maya were old friends was kind of implied that they weren't just friends. Oh, they used to be kind of lovers or something, yeah. Yeah. They used to, like, they used to bone. Yeah, basically. <laughs> they used to bone. <laughs> with Tony Stark, that's about all you get, right? Uh, exactly. I was like, come on, guys. It's with, you know, you're talking about Tony Stark. You know, dude yeah. talked to, what's her name? Uh, what's the reporter's name from part one? Brown. Uh, Everhart. <laughs> Christine yeah, Christine Everhart. Everhart. She did quite the spread on Tony. Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> she also wrote an article. She wrote an article, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took him, like, five minutes to get that chick in the sack. Come on, Al. <laughs> she was a whore. But yeah. I think I've actually, we've actually confirmed that she's going to be making a, an appearance in this one as well. Really? It would be an Iron Man movie without her, I mean... Exactly. I mean, you need you need the blonde slut. You need the continuity. <laughs> Plus um. one for continuity. <laughs> Uh, Doc's fucking messaging me. Anyway, um, so yeah, AIM, AIM's gonna be playing a big role, and honestly, I think, um, one of my theories is that Aldrich Killian, I mean, he's, I think he, initially he's gonna be working for the Mandarin, but, um, I think him and Tony might end up teaming up at the very end against Mandarin. Hmm. I mean, I think it's possible, you never know. That Aldrich Killian and Tony are going to be teaming up? Yeah, by the very end to take out the Mandarin. Hmm. That's, uh, that's interesting. There's just some, there's something in me that's itching to think that uh, Aldrich Killian and Tony, I mean, what do we, I mean, we love seeing redemption in movies. What would we love more than to see Guy Pierce kind of get a, a redemption towards the end and him and Tony team up against the Mandarin? Because I don't, I'm not putting it past the Mandarin that he's going to double cross Killian as well. Yeah. The other thing, like, I don't know if you guys ever watched Earth My Earth My Heroes. Oh, of up. course. Okay, like you remember like the oh, I can't remember what the name of the episode was called. It was where Aim and Hydra were at war in the middle of the city, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe kind of a situation where like Killian and Mandarin turn on each other. Yeah, I, I mean that's what I'm calling right now. I'm thinking that's like, gonna happen. It's like it's like Killian and his guys versus Mandarin and his guys versus Tony and Rhodey. Yeah, Tony like and Rhodey, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because I think it's a Shane Black buddy cop like we've seen in Lethal Weapon, you know? Yeah, so which is going to be pretty legit. It will be, and I think there's going to be some great dialogue and great scenes between the two. Much, I think there's going to be, I mean, I think there's going to be much better dialogue just for the pure purpose that Justin Thoreau's Iron Man script, you know, a lot of the <laughs> improv wasn't the best. Yeah. So I'm hoping that this more, you know, really seals the deal with, you know, well, like I said, man, I mean, I've, I've said it before that I've, you know, I'm a bigger fan of the Terrence Howard portrayal, but at the same time, you know, what are you going to do? You can't make Terrence Howard in an Iron Man 3, so 
all you can do is hope for the best, you know, and just hope that, you know, Cheadle does, you know, have a, have a better chemistry with, with Robert Downey Jr., which, you know, come on, man, it's Robert Downey Jr. Who doesn't have good chemistry with that guy? Yeah, I think, um, like, that scene you were talking about, John, where we see uh, Rhodey with uh, um, the pistols and everything, I think we're going to be getting to see a little bit more of Rhodey and what makes him such a great character in this installment as opposed to the last one. And I think uh, him having the guns is just going to show some of his prowess from the military and fighting and yeah. stuff. And I think, you know, I think we're going to we're gonna see a much more developed character. Basically, yeah, in a, in a nutshell, we're going to see the reason why he's the only civilian other than Tony Stark that's wearing a suit, you know? They, like, I mean, there's got to be another reason, not just other than, you know, because he's Tony Stark's friend. You know, the guy, you know, he's he's a badass, you know, in, in the Air Force where he's at. You know, he's a major colonel or, you know, so it's it's it's, it's going to be a big deal. So, yeah, the but, Iron Patriot is basically going to be the military's Iron Man. Yes. Yeah. And, and you see that, like, in the trailer, like, there's a couple scenes there where he bursts into a compound or something. He starts, you know, getting applause people. and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. And, and speak, speaking of Rhodey, it, it, I, know I talked to you, a little bit with you about this before, but like in the prelude comic, we finally find out where Rhodey was during the New York attack. Yeah, and um, actually, go ahead, because I want to know where he was. I want to hear the explanation as to why he wasn't involved in the Avengers helping out against the Chitauri. Right. So the way they, the way they have it set up is Tony actually designs a new war machine suit for Rhodey so that he's not wearing the old one he had in Iron Man 2. Yeah. And that's why the gun looks different on it and whatnot. That's why the suit looks different. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's what becomes Iron Patriot or what, I don't know, but anyways, like, so he goes on a mission for the government, like, and it involves fighting the Ten Rings. Really? And we find out that the Ten Rings have been supplying weapons to all these governments, at least uh, radical governments and terrorists and whatnot, and and so throughout the, this is just in part one, throughout part one he goes on all these missions, and on a particularly dangerous one, he ends up fighting some like huge tank thing that was like originally a Stark design that was copied by, by or taken over by the Ten Rings. Mm-hmm. And that's when New York goes down. Tony actually calls Rhodey and asks him, can you help? And he says, no, I'm in the middle of something right now. Huh. So you see where Rhodey's at during the Battle of New York. And it actually shows part of the Battle of New York during the comic, too. Cool, cool. That's actually, you know, that's a, that's a pretty legit explanation right there, you know? I can believe it. I can buy into it. Well, you know, like, I, I will say, other than, you know, helping out a friend, I guess it takes your duty to... You know, to your country to be like, hey man, you know, I'm sorry, I can't help you fix your flat tire. And you know, and that's, I mean, not to say it's, you know, that the New York attack wasn't a big deal. <laughs> it's the equivalent guess, of a flat tire, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it's just like the whole, you know, just the whole thing. Like, I, I'm assuming that Rhodey probably had no clue that the attack was that big, or you know, I, I'm sure Tony was just like, hey dude, can you help out a little bit? He's like, hey man, I'm busy. It wasn't like. Hey, Rudy, get the fuck over back to New York, dude. There's aliens over here. You know? I wonder if that'll I mean... be semi-mentioned in this in Iron Man 3. I mean, I, I, I assume they might just one quick line about it. Yeah, it's like, where were you, where were you, where were you a year ago, jackass? Well, if it, involves, if it involves the Ten Rings, which is what Tony's going up against, I'm sure there's going to be something. Well, you're kind of, now that, you know, Nerf kind of touched on that and, like, basically gave us that description... I mean, maybe basically this is something where, like, maybe the government or, you know, the United States thinks that they can take care of this, you know, terrorist Mandarin, but maybe he's just too big a fish, you know, for the government to take care of, and it takes, you know, Iron Man to have to come and, you know, come at him with everything he's got, thus setting up, you know, a nice, a, you know, a better rivalry, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm, just, it, I'm, I'm, and the other thing, too, like, I, I haven't read part two, but I've only read part one of the prelude. Uh, like shortly after, after he talks to Tony, like he might be able to go help him. But like right after that, he gets just fucking blasted by this tank thing, and like the comic ends on him like laying there, like with the armor smoking. 
looked like yeah. he just got his ass kicked. So, so maybe this kind of starts out with, you know, that. I mean, it could find, maybe fall from that attack. What I'm thinking, yeah. um, per, what I'm thinking um, is Mandarin might have a personal vendetta against Tony because of Rhodey's actions. Maybe he didn't know it was Rhodey in the suit. He maybe, uh, I mean, I don't know, but Rhodey could be very much the reason Mandarin's pissed off at te- quote unquote the Iron Man. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's too like in the comic. Like everybody thinks it's Tony. Like they don't reveal that it's not Tony in the suit. Exactly. Ah, uh, everybody thinks it's Iron Man. Yeah, so Some I mean, interesting shit. That makes a lot of sense. It actually does. I yeah, like, like Rhodey actually gets like pissed. He's like, "I'm not Iron Man." Like whenever people are like say, "Oh, it's Iron Man," he's like, "I'm not <laughs> Iron Man." I'm my own person. God damn it. Hmm. Well, it's kind of. I guess that's just weird. Like, but I can definitely see that, dude. I can. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Maybe that's what earns him the um, the Iron Patriot armor for you know such a patriotic act. That's what uh, they. That's why they decide to repaint the armor the way they do. But yeah, like, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Like that was pretty cool like, in the comics. Like I have to get part two and finish reading it, but it might explain the Iron Patriot thing too. And I don't know. It, yeah, dude, it's just a beautiful thing that they're expanding on this universe, dude. I mean, yeah. like. That's that's one thing that got me hyped up about that video yesterday for Phase Two. It's like, you know, they said, "Hey, you know, with with these five movies, we created a world. Now we're expanding a universe." So it's like, yeah. dude, there's gonna be some some sick stuff coming from Marvel, dude. Like, if we thought that they were on a roll just doing these first couple of movies, these solo movies leading up to Avengers, dude, they're on a bullet train, dude, because it is <laughs> going straight to the top. Yeah, it is, man. All right, so uh, what's the next topic we want to we want to tackle? I know uh, Durf wanted to talk about that building, or wherever Tony's at when the paparazzi kind of uh, flood him. Um, the dog. I know he wants to talk about the dog tags that we see the Mandarin have putting on the knife in the trailer, and then um, I also want to talk about Tony and the child scenes. Yeah. Well, I mean, first, I guess uh, what I want to touch on is. I know we touched on it a little bit. I mean, I know we touched on it a lot, actually, in the last podcast, but I'm really, dude, especially after a couple of these last TV spots that have been coming out in the trailer, the Mandarin is going to be one creepy fucking dude. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, and, you know, like, this whole thing, like, the TV spots of them where the Mandarin is actually sending videos, you know, like, terrorist videos, I mean, this is going to be, you know, like... The thing is, I, they're making this one as, as fantastical, you know, as, you know, this story is going to be, the ways of communication with this movie are going to be insane. Like, I, I really dig the fact that, you know, I, that Mandarin is going to be sending these these videos, you know, similar to like, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to compare them, but I mean, it was a good little thing where like, you know, the Joker was making those movies, you know. Broadcasting and, Yeah, broadcasting, yeah. you know, to see, you know. I mean, like, how, what what better of a of, of a way, you know, a villainy is that is, you know, kind of like stick your, you know, stick your thumb out at these people and be like, hey, look, you can't find me, you never see me coming, but I'm gonna blow all your shit up. Well, yeah, and I I'm think that's a, we, less. yeah, we talked about in the last po- podcast. He wants a public altercation with Tony. I mean, that's yeah. that's the way he wants to take Tony down. He wants the yeah. public to know it. So yeah, definitely. Right. And I mean, even the thing with Tony. Tony talking on that dude's cell phone, be like, "Look, dude, it's just gonna be you and me. There's no, no politics, no government. This is, you know, this is about you and me. We're gonna settle this one on one." Perfect segue so, yeah. into um, Grant or Durf wanting to talk about uh, the building, basically that that happens at. What do you think, Durf? Go on. See, like, I'm, I'm cur- I'm really curious about the building because I think it's one of two places, either like some sort of hospital. Yeah. Where it might. Like, if, like, it was Maya Hansen was, like, helping, maybe that's the AIM building? Yeah. Like, I, I'm i just kind of curious to what building that is, like, because it doesn't look exactly like a hospital, but it could be, I don't know. The more I think about it, the more I think it's, um, I think it's an AIM facility, because with the way Tony's calling out the Mandarin right there in front of all these cameras, I think it's right, it might be right, I mean, it shows him walking out, right, not walking into... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so maybe he just got injected with the extremist virus, and he's like, "Hey, motherfucker, I got something for you." Yeah, exactly. That's perfect, dude. That's 
perfect. Like, seriously, it couldn't be better. It was like, you know what, dude? You think, you know, yeah, you, you blew up my house, dude. But you, you think know you know what to expect? You yeah. have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I think that that's actually brilliant, dude. If they did that, that would, that would touch on it. Man, it's awesome, dude. That would be just pure, pure Iron Man right there. It's like, you know what, man? I'm not sweating you. I'm not sweating you anymore. Yeah, I mean, he's, like, I got, he's like, this is good old-fashioned revenge, so this is obviously after he attacked the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, a, well, I mean, like, that's the thing, is either, either he's gonna build that suit, or I, I don't know, but it's, man, it's just, it's just crazy that the trailer has just had so many different angles that it's just gonna, I mean, as much as we're talking about it, and as much as we know, like, still there's a lot of, like, man, what is that? What is going on here? Yeah. Like, I cannot wait, dude. I really cannot wait. It's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, the only other reason I can see him calling out the Mandarin like that publicly is that um, instead of it, him already having the extremis injected into him, it's that he has that Mandarin has no idea that he has 47 armors that can attack him, you know, whenever he wants. Yeah. He has yeah. an army. Which is going to be, yeah, which is going to be nuts because, I mean, you know... And this is to go ahead and, you know, shut some people up who, you know, keep on thinking that Mandarin is going to have a surprise armor or that Mandarin's got an army on his own. It's been confirmed. I mean, you know, but then again, you know, I think if we were going to see, an, uh, you know, a robot army or another droid army versus a droid army. Drones, we, dude, I, this isn't I, Star Wars. I, 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 I think we would have, I think we would have seen that by now. Because, you know, if you can see, remember the, the trailers for Iron Man 2... You know, they have the hammer drones yeah. you know, coming down and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think there's going to be anything. And I think people are, you know, <clears throat> it's not that they're tired of the armor wars or anything like that. But I think you're I think you're going to get enough armor from these 40 suits. Yeah, we're not going to see Mandarin in any armors. I think we can lay that to rest, uh, bury it. But um, I think one thing that just occurred to me is that in the very first Iron Man, when he's, when Jeff Bridges is talking to the uh, head of the Ten Rings guy, basically, that gets his face blown up, um, he said, you'll provide me with an army of Iron Soldiers. That's basically what Tony's built himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's an excellent which is, actually. Which, yeah, which actually, you know, it's, it's kind of like it took them... It, it took, you know, having been attacked and all these things to happen for Iron Man to kind of realize that's like, you know what, man, I got to be ready. Yeah. You know, I got to be ready because, you know what, I don't know, I don't know when the next alien attack is just going to come. I don't know, if, you know, a terrorist is going to come. I mean, this is going to be a, like one of those movies where he's definitely going to secure his badassery <laughs> in this one. He's like, man, I'm all covered, dude. I'm, yeah. all, I'm covered on all ends. All my, all my T's are crossed. All my eyes are dotted. So I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm yeah. ready. What are you thinking, Dirk? What's that? So what are you thinking, man? Uh, I think John. I think you and John both put it pretty well. I mean, he's got that. He's got that army of suits to be prepared for anything that's coming his way. I mean, obviously, obviously, from what we heard in the trailers and whatnot, the alien attack thing shook him up. Like he doesn't know what to do. Like he's he needs to be prepared for something like that. Yeah, definitely. I think. I think it's not, not really to compare, like, you know, it's not that he, I wouldn't say that he doesn't know what to do, but he is definitely lost in the sense that he's like, man, you know, as, like I was just saying, he is prepared, but he's like, man, as prepared as I am, am I ever going to be like that prepared? I think it's less like, about that, and um, I think, you know, this would have been better suited for the first podcast, um, but, you know, hey, shit strikes you when it does. But I think um, the whole attack on New York with the Chitari actually really tony felt put in his place you know i mean i think he's always kind of seen himself as the king of of the world who could do anything better than anyone else and now that he sees that you know humans aren't alone in the universe and it's humbled him to a to a point where it's scared him you know he he realizes that he he doesn't present a as big of a threat or he's he's not as powerful as he once thought he was because there are all these other worlds out there that are inhabited by much stronger beings and um what it, what happens if earth is ever the target well another thing too like like what you're saying is you recognize this guy's stronger like 
he met a guy when he fought Thor. He met a guy who could take a repulsor blast in the face and just shrug it off. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's some scary shit. Thinking you've got the the pinnacle of weaponry and some dude with no armor at all just shook off four hundred percent of your blast. I will say I will say that's true, and at the same time, I think as well as being scared, I that's not. I don't think that that's a. I don't think that's a feeling that's going to stay with him for long. Because I think when he notices it, I mean, of course, who wouldn't be shocked, you know, like, at that? Not to say, you know, if this were real, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, going because it's a live-action movie. But, you know, if you found something like that out, but, you know, when you when you face that and, you know, you humble yourself a little bit, you do get the confidence to, to overcome those odds. So, I mean, that's why you get, you know, stuff like, you know, the space suit, and, you know, what we were talking about before. Because it's like, man, you know what? I'm, I'm scared, but at the same time, you can't just stay living like that. You know, I, I want to go and test the waters. I think so. I mean, yeah, the uh, um, I think the Iron Man armors that he's built are just a product of his uh, anxiety. You know, could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well. I mean, because of course, you know, these podcasts are just you know leading from assumption and speculation. You know, I mean, uh, the only thing we've really confirmed is you know the the, the details. But I mean, definitely, you know, there's there, there could be a billion reasons as to why he's making that armor. But uh, it's just fun to, to see it, dude. Like, man, it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, like, definitely. Like, unbelievable, dude. <laughs> it's it's going to be one hell of a sight. And uh, I don't know if I if I said this in the last podcast. I know I've said this to you, John, but I think this is going to be the best Marvel film to date. Agreed. I think you can quote me on it. And uh, anyone who disagrees, I mean, tell me why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, it's, it's got a strong cast. It's got you know it's got some talented actors. It's it's got a new a new vision from a new director, you know, and it's you know it's cool, you know. It's I'm, and it's really funny, you know, because part threes are always the hardest to do with comic book movies. But, but I think they're, that's like, because they're they're so freeing at the same time. I think that a, that a third installment, I mean, you've done the origin, you've done the follow up to the origin. What do you do next? And I think a lot of people kind of start to panic once that structure is lost. And, well, it uh, definitely makes it, yeah, no, that's true, and, and it, I'm just, just want to add in, it definitely makes it more difficult in the fact that, you know, Tony's actually been in three films already. He has. You know, he's had, you know, a, I mean, if you want to say it, a quote-unquote part three in Avengers, yeah. you know, so I mean, but, you know, for this solo movie, yeah, part threes are hard to do, man, so yeah, you're you're totally right. But I think uh, I think Shane Black has really embraced this opportunity, because I think he is a def- he's definitely a fresh face to this uh, this franchise and I don't think he feels that he needed to play by certain rules that the first two did and I think this this installment of Iron Man is going to be a big uh, breath of fresh air and I think I think another thing that's going to help with Lachine Black coming on is him and Robert Downey Jr. have worked together before right? yeah kiss kiss bang bang yeah right. and plus you know they did they have gone on record saying that they did consult Shane Black some on the first Iron Man movie. Right, yeah. They did talk to him. So, I mean, it's not like he hasn't been involved at all with these movies. He does have some knowledge of them, so... Definitely. I mean, if, if uh, you know, the director is consulting this guy on the very first film, he's obviously... Um, he's a he's a vat of knowledge that needs to be tapped, and um, now that we're completely exploiting his... Uh, everything that he has to bring, um, I think this movie is going to be one hell of an endeavor, and I think it's going to be really bold. I don't think it's going to be like any other Marvel film we've seen. I mean, all the other Marvel films have... I mean, we can say it. They've played it pretty safe. Uh, This one's playing it pretty close to the chest, though. Very much, dude. Very much. Piggybacking on that, I think, like, the Avengers proved to them that, like, you know what? We can go balls out. Like, we can... Yeah. (laughs) Like... We don't have to just play it close to the best and be safe. We can, we can have you know a, a battle with forty plus armors at the end of our Iron Man movie. Why the hell not, right? We can have a talking raccoon and a talking tree in a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely gonna. It's like I said, it, like y'all were saying, man. It's they understand now with the success of the first films that they're gonna be able to expand on this universe. And I mean, I, I think. It's pretty cool saying that the way they're expanding is they're going deep, dude. They're yeah. going real deep. They're going know? balls the, deep with yeah. this. Because <laughs> one of the things that's even more exciting, and I, you know, I don't know if anybody pointed it out during the podcast, and I just want to think, you know, just wanted to throw it in there, is just, you know, from all the little behind the scenes that we've been seeing, man, Tony, you know, is gonna have some scenes where he's not in the armor. 
got oh, some action scenes. Exactly, and I think uh, that's a perfect segue into the Tony and the child scenes that we've heard about and haven't seen much about. Exactly. Like, that's going to be interesting to see. You know, this guy is going to, like, I mean, there's the one clip from one of the trailers where he's getting attacked by a lady. I can't remember what her name is. I know she's a confirmed character from the books. But yeah. he's getting attacked. Go ahead, man. You know it. <laughs> Trying to think, what, I'm trying to think. What, she's played by Stephanie So Zostag. So Zostag. Can't remember what the name of the character is though. I got a computer, but I don't want a, the typing of the keys to register on, on the mic. I could probably do this. But Ellen Brandt. Oh, is it the is it the sword agent? The agent of sword. Yes. Is that her? Let's see. Um. Uh, oh, she's an agent for AIM. Yeah. In the movie, but I mean, in the comic books, is she an agent for Sword? You're thinking, no, you're thinking of uh, you're thinking of Abigail Brand. That's it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No, this is uh, Ellen Brand, and uh, look in their little bio. She's a supporting character of Ted Salas from Man Thing, um, but she is her boyfriend's uh, Man Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so right. So Ellen is the wife of you know Man Thing and an agent of M. She attempts to steal some of her aim. She attempts to steal some of his research for AIM, but is transformed. But he is transformed into man thing, and okay. burns off half her face. <laughs> so, she, so she has so a role gonna, in Iron Man three, huh? She has a role in Iron Man three. Yeah. I wonder what. She, and she kicks Tony's ass. Well, there's that one scene, man, where Tony gets like shoved into a wall, dude, like by some lady. I don't know. I mean, it's, I think it's pretty much confirmed to be her. Yeah. Huh. No, it's yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's confirmed. But all I'm saying is like, there's a scene where. She, She's someone roughs Tony up, dude. And like that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, it's just it's exciting to see that you know there's gonna be some action outside the suit. Yeah. You know, he's gonna take action. He's gonna have a fucking Uzi. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, what else? I mean, him and Rhodey, obviously, when they uh, tote some guns. Yeah, they're gonna be having some little Glocks. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think we're gonna see a we're gonna see a different side of Tony, which I'm not gonna get into. We we said it a lot last podcast, but I'm really I'm really stoked to see uh, the evolution of his character. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I think it's it's definitely going to be one of those movies. It's, it's it's not... I don't think there's going to be anything really comedic in this film. I no, mean, I don't think... I, I mean, I, it'll be fun at points, but I think this is going to have much more of a darker undertone than it has I previously. Think, I think most of the comedy we'll see will probably with the scenes with the kid. Like, Yeah, that'll be fun. where the comedy comes from. A kid yeah. who's going to hold his own against Robert Downey Jr. I mean, that's that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be some exciting things to watch and then, you know, just oh man, it just it just looks uh, this movie just looks so different, dude. You know, like yeah. people, and, I, and I know like it's it's said before, you know that sequels are different and sequels are, you know, a continuation, but while this is a continuation of the Iron Man story from the films, this is this just looks like a different movie, dude. Like, yeah, it really, I feel like really this does. can really stand alone, you know, apart from the rest of the franchise. It could, and, but you know what? Uh, you know what is? You tapped it right there, dude. Is because when you look at all five of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, Iron Man is like the only one that does stand alone. Yeah. Like, like that that yeah. film right there. Like, and, and I mean, when you're talking about specific films, like, I'm sorry to say, you know, and this is not, you know, not disrespecting the character of Thor or the character of Captain America, but at the same time, you can kind of tell that those movies were leading up to the Avengers. Yeah. Right. Iron Iron Man is Iron Man seems, and even though it was the first one, still you can watch it now, and it is one of those movies like it is his own, it's his own entity, dude. Like it's. There's just something different about that Iron Man movie. Like, I mean, even though it's five years old, with five it's movies, crazy I mean, to think next, about. yeah, next to next to Avengers, dude, Iron Man is still, in my mind, in my opinion, dude, and I don't know about anybody else's, Iron Man is the best Marvel cinematic movie, the, the Marvel solo movie to date. Oh yeah, definitely. Now, I mean, and maybe until thirty days from now, when we see Iron Man three, I may have some different words, but. It's still an Iron Man movie, so it's like, dude, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. I mean, the other Cap and Thor, I think were were uh, very cautious characters for the for the studio. Um, I think they had to really play it safe with those two because they weren't as marketable of characters as Tony Stark. Um, I think Tony Stark has had the potential, always had, always has had the potential, to be a huge character among among um, the general go- movie going audience. But Thor, you know, a god. And Captain America, a super soldier in World War II, you know, from two generations ago, 
those are probably not as marketable, and they had to play it safe with the solo outings. But I think now they're gonna get a lot more broad, uh, a lot more bold. But um, anyway, that's that's going off topic. Sorry. The other movie they kind of had free. They kind of I know they're a little more free with was the Hulk movie too. Like yeah, they didn't have to bring that one in quite as much either because people know the Hulk already. So that was kind of. We also kinda, think uh, you know you guys kind of kind of hit it pretty good. You know, in the sense of not being marketable. And I think one of the reasons that they probably weren't as marketable is because is because story wise, I'm not I'm not sure they're as relatable. Yeah. to the character of Iron Man because it's just like the same factor as I'm not saying it's the same factor like identical but what I do think is that people gravitate more towards a real person right which is what Tony is you know more like yeah. the Batman thing with DC is you know people gravitate more with Batman because he's a real person you know but you can believe these things that Tony does you know I mean you can believe one of the smartest guys in the world you know I mean there's got to be someone who's coming up with the greatest technology in the world, you know, in this world that we live in. So, I mean, you know, people can understand it and they can relate to it, you know. Right. And yeah. not only that, but he has the perfect characteristics of of an everyday pe- of everyday people, you know. There's a lot of people who are cocky as hell out there, you know. There's yeah. a lot of people who are, you know, clowns and jokesters, kind of like he is, you know. So, it's like, one of the reasons he is, I mean, definitely taken, you know, taken the ball and ran with it, so to speak, is like leading the Marvel Universe now is... Because he's just so relatable. Yeah, and uh, I think we're getting really off topic here. Um, I mean, I, you know, of course it's... Everything you said is true, John, um, but I think we, we hit on that in the last podcast, and um, I want, you know, there's a couple more things I want to I want to get into. Um, I, and back, I want to get back to the uh, the kid in the cave. Um, obviously, this kid is, a, uh, is some kind of device used to... Um, amplify or extract something out of Tony we haven't seen yet, you know? And it's it's going to be a, a plot device that turns this character from one, going one direction and takes him 90 degrees the other way. And I'm wondering what it is. I mean, this kid is going to be a catalyst for something. Um, what do you guys think it's going to be? Hmm. Like, from what I hear from, like, kind of what I've heard is, like, at first he's kind of really harsh on the kid, like, well, and yeah, Tony's probably never really dealt with children before. It's like straight up, like, mean to the kid almost. Like, yeah. <laughs> but this kid dishes it back out from what I hear. Yeah, so I mean, like, maybe it's a thing of, like, this kid shows him, like, uh, it's hard to say, like, maybe he shows him that, you know, he doesn't have to be an asshole all the time. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking um, maybe it has something to do with um, showing how powerful you can be outside of outside of an armor. You know, how, how much the person inside the armor, how much power they can hold. That is actually, that's a good, uh, that'd be a good, uh, good setup for it. Because I think it's, it's going to be one of those things that, you know, like you were saying, it's, it's going to humble him. Yeah. And, and I think that what leads up to that scene is when we see Tony dragging the suit behind him in the trailer. Um, and so, you know, I think it has to, it has to be something along those lines. It has to be... Hey, you're not in a suit. You've got your suit crashing here on my couch. You're a dickhead to me. Um, but then, as they get to know each other, and I think this kid even helps him um, repair his armor. He's somewhat of a prodigy himself. Um, he's gonna see that the little man holds a lot more power, and a man outside of an Iron Man armor still is a powerful person. And they can make a difference without, you know, an army of Iron Man armors. Yeah. And you know something like he may have a he may be a little different purpose, but like he's kind of the ensign in this one, I think. Hey, that's a great analogy. Yeah, I do like there that. You go. It, he like, almost finds a mentor character in a kid. That's pretty interesting. Like he kind of he teaches Tony something. Like yeah, the he value has to. Of, I mean, like the value of his like the ensign kind of taught him the value of. Uh, let's see what's the word? I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out, guys. The, the value of life, basically, like a second right, chance, a second chance. Yeah, have, yeah, having that second chance. Whereas this kid, maybe, maybe he's a fan of Iron Man, and he's like, hey, you know, we're the kind of people you're fighting for. Maybe, you know, it's almost like a a rock star being um, kind of unacquainted with his fans. You know, he doesn't really get to know his fans. He just does it for the fans, but he doesn't get to know them on a personal level. So it's like Iron Man's a rock star. 
but he doesn't get to know the little people that he's he's protecting and he's saving, you know? I think that that's a definitely good analogy, especially from the trailers that we hear where Iron Man, I mean, where I want to say Tony is more, more you know, he, like you're saying, he's, he's being very cautious because he's worried about the people that he loves, but I think this kid is going to really teach him. It's like, listen, dude, like, I know you care about people. I, I know you care about the one, you know, ones that you love and you don't want to lose them, but you know, as Iron Man, as this hero, you have a responsibility to the world. Yeah, you know? it, it makes you me show, think. Maybe you know, you show you you showed it. You know, when you put the nuke up into space, but you know, can you, do you really do you really know it? You know. Yeah, it makes me think about uh, the line in the in the trailer where he says, "I I have to protect the one thing I care about, and that's you." Maybe Tony's gonna learn that there's more than just one thing that he cares about, and. Um, that he may be a global hero, but he also needs to be a hero for the people, for his people. Yeah. And maybe right. that's that's what this kid is. He's like, hey, you know, I'm a fan of Iron Man. I, I love everything that you stand for. Yeah, especially knowing that he's the only like, I mean, regular human in, yeah. in his uh, in his universe. Right. I mean, that's too late. I mean, when he he when he's without the armor, it's like it's obvious like he's got his you know he's got his ass kicked. Yeah. He's broken. Yeah, maybe maybe he's lost like, maybe he's lost faith in himself. With you know, maybe he doesn't think he can do anything. Right. But then like, it shows him that like even without the armor you can do something. Like you can you're just as strong as the armor as you are with it. Like, yeah. Well yeah, that's that's perfect because it goes back to the uh you know, that little synopsis is like, you know, he's gotta find out does the suit make the man or does the man make the suit? You know, like what's more important? Like is it you know, which is always good with Marvel movies because I think in the end, you know, you do care about all the flashiness and all the fights and everything, but at the end, it's a badass character story, dude. It's badass. Yeah, this kid's probably going to be somewhat of an inspiration for Tony. Yeah, and it's cool just because, you know, kids are, I mean, on the kid level, you know, any child that's going to walk in and be like, oh, man, I wish I had a scene with Iron Man. I wish I could just sit there with the suit. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's going to be tons of kids jealous, like, dude. I wish I had a suit just laying right here in front of me. Yeah, but also, you know, kids are also one of the purest forms of, uh, of innocence, right? And so that's another thing that Tony is trying to preserve as Iron Man is um, just just the way of life, you know? Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be some it, it's gonna be some deep shit, man. Like, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't want to, you know, get too cliche, but, you know, it's going to be, like we were saying, it's going to be a deep story. It's going to have... You know, some depth is not just going to be, you know, blowing shit up, which is, you know, what's, I think the best thing about that and the, one of the perfect things about Phase 2 is that you're able to do that now. Like, you've got, it's kind of like you've gotten fans' attention by giving them, you know, the explosions and, and you know, the great action scenes. And, you know, Avengers still had an amazing story, but, you know, now, like, you know, with this Phase 2, dude, it's, you know, especially starting off with Iron Man 3, it's, it's going to go deeper. It's going to delve into... You know, character development, rich character development, dude. Because that's that's the thing. This one, that's that's the one thing that's been keeping these comics going on for you know 50 years plus. So, I mean, if it works in the books, it can work on a live action feature film. So, right. Yeah, definitely, great. man. I, I definitely agree. Uh, Durf, what do you what are you thinking, man? Uh, bring it back up to me. I cut I cut out for a second there, so. Yeah, I know. I was trying not to let anyone know that you did, but um. <laughs> We're just talk. We, I mean, we just kind of close out the conversation about the kid and and what he means, and then you know we're talking about how Phase Two is gonna be much more of an intimate and personal battle for all of our heroes. Right. I think that that sounds up pretty well. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it. like they they said from the beginning that Iron Man Three was gonna be more personal for Tony, like. And it has to be to be a follow up to the Avengers. It has to be personal because you can't get everybody involved. You have to have a good reason not to. Yeah, and kind of bring back to even the Avengers a little bit. Joss Whedon even said that like Avengers Two is gonna be more personal. Right. I think that's kind of the theme of Phase Two is it's it's personal now. It's not just you know trying to say well something personal goes on. Yeah, these characters have made themselves known. Now they're gonna be starting. Now they're starting to get real enemies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I know that Durf wanted to hit on was a. Uh, I mean, I don't know where he's planning to take it, but I'm interested to hear um, the dog tags that we see the Mandarin putting on that knife in the trailer. Take it away, man, because I'm not really sure where you wanted to go with it. Well, I, I just kind of want to discuss it because 
like the, it seems pretty prominent in the trailer, like. And the men in the hoods, you wanted to hit those too. I don't know if you can connect yeah, those yeah. or not, but. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to connect them, maybe. All right, but well, uh, yeah, let's go to the dog like, tags. Like they made a big, big deal of like those. That was something important. So I just kind of want to discuss like who do we think those dog tags could belong to, or is it just something maybe that to show something about the Mandarin? Maybe I don't know. Um, personally, what I think is um, it's kind of the flip side of the coin to Tony putting the necklace on Pepper, right? And, um, I mean, I'm not sure who these... I mean, it was like that. It was like, hey, there's a close-up of, of the Mandarin's hand with some dog tags in them, and he's hanging them up. And um, I'm thinking that maybe it's... I mean, I don't know who these things belong to. They could very well belong to someone specific in the movie. But I think that maybe it's to show that he's, he's a conqueror. He's conquering somebody at the time. Or he just has conquered, or he's, um, I don't know... Basically sentencing someone to death already, dead man walking kind of theme. I'm not sure. I don't really don't know what they what it, what it means. Right, John, what do you think? Man, I I, I want to think that uh, you know that is going to be some type of symbolism for you know taking his prisoners. I mean, I I know that's a that's a that's a different uh, like a memorabilia for for you know maybe taking someone's life. I mean, I know that in the trailer there's that huge explosion in Asia. I don't know what part of it's in China or, you know, I don't know where it's going to be, but there's a huge explosion and there's like a little memorial, you know, place like around it. So there's going to be a lot of people dying, uh, you know, in this movie. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's going to be a lot of casualties like, you know, by civilians, you know, and I think that the Mandarin is just one of those guys, like he's going to take that, you know, that, that dog tag and probably just put it there as like, you know, I ended this dude. And, you know, maybe that's another thing is, you know, the symbolism from the posters of the Mandarin, how his foot is just rested on Iron Man's helmet, where his Iron Man's helmet is all beat up and stuff, you know, that could be, you know, where he gets a shot of the helmet, you know, like, and he, you know, takes it in as, I mean, I guess calling it like a souvenir, so, I mean, I, I, that's what I think, I yeah. think that that'd be, that'd be something, something around that, so. I think it's definitely a souvenir, um, no doubt about that. I think oh, it's a souvenir of some sort. I'm yeah, sure it's, it's some it's morbid not... souvenir. Um, but thinking about it more and more, I mean, who's the one person that we know, at least in Tony Stark's world, uh, who's who's in the military? Rhodey, right? And in yeah. the um, and in the tie-in that you were talking about, Durf, the comic book, the prelude kind of to what Rhodey was doing in the Avengers before Iron Man three, everything like that. Um, maybe it has something to do with him because maybe again, like we said earlier, that uh, Mandarin develops a personal vendetta against the Iron Man armor. And didn't know it was Rhodey at the time. Maybe he finds out it was Rhodey. Could be Rhodey's dog tags. Who knows? But we also know that he attacks Air Force One, uh, which has uh, military uh, personnel on there to guard the president. So, I mean, it could be tied to any of those things. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But again, yep. this, that's one that's one vague part of the trailer. I just I can't kind of get a read on. As much stuff, and like I said, it goes back to what I was saying. As much cool stuff as we're getting and piecing together, there's uh, there's still a lot of vague stuff in that trailer. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks <laughs> left, which which I'm happy about because honestly, um, digging too deep in these things has, you know, ruined some really cool moments in movies that I wish I hadn't known about before. Yeah. So I'm I'm okay I'm, with these question marks being left. Man. True. True. And like you mentioned, the other thing I want to talk about is like, there's a scene in the trailer, there's a screen cap of it somewhere. Um, the Mandarin stands up, and I think it's during when he's talking about the honorable, it's the honorable death line, I think. Oh, dude, that is such a great line. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the trailer, um, he says something along the lines of, do you want a empty so, life or a meaningful life. death? Yeah, that's just a great line, man. Uh, it's, it's great writing. If you haven't seen the Thor, anybody listening to this, if you haven't seen the Thor trailer, you should have stopped at like point Thor one trailer. Second. We're not talking I mean, Thor. The, I'm sorry, the Iron Man trailer. trailer. Is Muggy there bu right bugging right. you, dude? <laughs> no. So, <laughs> what, uh, yeah, but if you haven't seen that, then you've been living under a rock, dude. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think it's during that line. Like he stands up and he holds his arms out and he's addressing. Oh, dude. Some manner these guys standing around. They're wearing hoods, like. Some occult. Yeah, so I don't know right. if that's my theory is like maybe those are his generals, like, the leaders, like the leaders of his different like cells. Like maybe like the ten rings could be like each ring represents 
a different cell of the terrorist group or something. Right, a little a different sect. I mean, one could be AIM. I mean, Aldrich Killian could be under one of those hoods. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to open up and discuss. Like, I think that's something that could be significant in some way. I mean, it could it could be very well that um, the Mandarin is so well connected that he's got he has ties and everything. You know, I mean, some of those people could be. Uh, big high government officials one hell one could be um, the president of China or I don't know if they have a president I'm <laughs> I'm not very worldly I'm sorry but um, yeah I don't, I don't I, I didn't I just realized a couple of days ago who Kim Jong-il was so yeah I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> well he's a yeah. dictator and he's an asshole actually ah fuck it we're not getting into that um but you know one could very well be something like that I know radioactive man gets involved um, which would also involve China but hell if I know uh, what those guys in the hoods are, which is another thing I'm happy about. I like I like the mystery, um, but I'm thinking Aldrich Killian at least is under one of those hoods. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think that's one thing that doesn't isn't really a secret anymore is you know the fact that you can. It may not be that they're not they're not working together. You know, similar to. You know, uh, with Lash and Justin Hammer, but I just yeah. think that Mandarin is going to be the big dog. You know, and Killian, you know, as we've seen, he's not going to be in a suit, or he's not going to be. Uh, from what we've seen, you know, I could be wrong, but uh, Killian is going to be more the right hand man. You know, the backup. You know, but still have an impact on the film. You know, and what he does is will still have an impact. So. Yeah, you know, he's definitely much like, more than a cameo. And also, real quick, in that scene that we see in the trailer of. Uh, Mandarin raising his arms like that. Anyone who thought that he did not look like his comic book counterpart can shut up as soon as they see that part, uh, that part of the trailer. That was, I mean, that sent chills down my spine the first time I saw it. I said, that is Mandarin. Yeah, man. I mean, and, and like, honestly, I don't even want to touch on that. If, if you're still, if you've gone this far, and you're still being like, man, he doesn't look like Mandarin, he's not chink eyed, he's not anything. <laughs> You can shut up, dude, because that's just, that's the biggest load of shit, yeah, you know. We explained in the last podcast, he's the uber terrorist, he's an amalgamation of, you know, all yeah. of the fears involving terrorism. He doesn't yeah. need to be, um, he doesn't need to be a certain ethnicity to be the Mandarin. No. The Mandarin is more an like, alias. If you want to get technical, he's not even Chinese, and, like, he's half English and half... Middle uh, Eastern. Well... Somewhere See, in Middle Eastern. Are we talking about Kingsley, or are we talking about, like, talking about the actor, or are we talking about the actual no, Mandarin? Sorry, Mandarin. Mandarin, oh. sir. Like, even in the comics, like, he's a descendant of Genghis Khan, who wasn't Chinese. True. Yeah. He was He was a mogul, or mongrel, something like that? Mongol. Mongol, okay, that's yeah. See, but, but, I mean, that, that, that's what I'm saying, and I know we're, you know, getting a little bit off subject, but that's the beautiful thing about the Mandarin, is this dude's been to other worlds. You know, this dude is, he's, he's got knowledge from, you know, Europe, Asia... You know, fucking maybe Pakistan or whatever. I mean, you know, I can understand if some people are tripping if the dude was wearing a turban. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. come on. But, you know, he's not wearing a turban. You know, he's got the green, he's got the iconic green jacket with different kind of dragon symbols all over it. Yeah, if you I pause mean, that, that moment where he raises his arms up, you see all the little intricate details in that cape that, or whatever's on his sleeves. And I know they mean something, but I, you know, yeah. I don't have a Rosetta Stone to decipher. Well, and he's also, like, also, if you notice, like, he surrounds himself with, like, dragon stuff. Like, he's got statues of dragons. Yeah, and, man. Like, he, and he's people, very involved in the mythology of it all. Yeah, even people that, you know, I don't know if they can tell, but, you know, some people are like, man, I swear that, that design in the back of, you know, the poster is like, man, I swear to God that looks like Fing Fang Foom. Yeah. Like, well, no shit, dude. I mean, like, <laughs> come on. Like, he controls anybody, Fing I mean, Fang yeah, Foom, but, right? Dude, if, you're, if you're still a month away from this movie and you're still tripping on fucking, on that he's not Chinese, dude. You need to get out, you know. <laughs> you need to get out. How, how fucking trippy, like, just kind of off topic. How fucking trippy would be if, like, that was the big reveal that, like, the final fight involved Fing Fang Foom, dude? That would be so epic, dude. <laughs> that would be so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Can you imagine the 40 armors against it or something? Ah, oh, dude. Dude, that would, they would tear him apart. I, you know what? I honestly don't know who the final battle is going to be against, but I, I'm really hoping that they learn from Iron Man 2, and this one is, you know, as climactic as it can get. Yeah, yeah. I think if, if they're, you know, I know that there's no guarantee that there's going to be another Iron Man movie, 
you know, I know that I, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure still on contract, you know, disputes or if this is going to be Tony or Robert Downey Jr.'s last film as Iron Man. No way. But I, I definitely think that just because it is, I know, just because, you know, there's no, there's nothing in, in stone about future, I definitely know that this movie is going to be one of those movies where, yes, it's going to leave, it's going to leave you, like, leaving the theater, it's going to make you leave the theater like, damn, that was... If it is finished, that's a good finish, but there's still going to be a badass thing in there where it's like, man, even though this was a badass finish, if it was over, there's still something in there that says this could definitely go on, lead on to another one. Right. Yeah. Dude, know? Dude, I think it's going to be one of those movies. And, and honestly, to do, like, it's, I can't name the movies, other movies that have done that, but there has been, and man, you get a good feeling, you know, and like I said, with Marvel movies, you better not leave, you know, when the credits start to roll. So. No, if anything, though, this movie, if there, if Marvel's smart, which I know they are, this movie's going to leave you wanting more Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Yeah. And that which would be is, the smartest move to go. Yeah, which it, it, it's, that, that's good nowadays, man, because I know, like, maybe back in, you know, maybe the 90s or something like that, some people were, you know, kind of tired of it. And, you know, now it's more accepting, you know. Like, you have guys like Robert Downey Jr., this is his... You know, technically, this is his fifth it's his appearance. franchise, man. Yeah, this this brought yeah. him back. This put him on the on everybody's radar again. Yeah, I mean, this is his fifth appearance, and I mean, people can't get enough of him, dude. And I mean, that's a, and the the cool thing too is not in you know the last five years that he's been playing Iron Man have we been gotten you know like man, I'm interested in doing different things, you know, like. You no, know, he's always wanting to do it. Yeah, dude, we we're we're lucky to have you know a guy that not only perfect like perfects the character but he loves doing it dude like he's just like man you know no matter what i'll play iron man until until they tell me no yeah dude, you know? he, he is iron man <laughs> damn dude if you live right next to a railroad track <laughs> yeah actually like there's a track literally down the street <laughs> <laughs> <It's terrible. laughs> um all right. Well, I don't know. You guys have anything left to say? I well, I do want to finish off with a real funny fucking quote because of that now. So. Well, we're at about an hour and forty minutes in this one, so we definitely didn't keep it short. But uh, fuck it, man. It was really good. I liked it, dude. I, I liked it. it. I had a good time. Yeah, I had a lot I of fun. Yeah, I feel like we had a good discussion out of it. We definitely did. I'm honestly thinking that we may have to, because uh, it was so long, which means we have a lot to discuss. It also says that, you know what, maybe the next time that we do do this, we could just do a, a trilogy of our own, like, after part three is out. Oh, yeah, dude, we're definitely going to do another one after we uh, see Iron little, Man 3. A little review mixed in with, like, what we were right about, you know, a couple of months ago, and what, you know, like, you could definitely see that. Oh, yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, I was planning it the whole time. We're definitely nice. doing another one. And we like, and we've even got like supposedly we've got a Thor trailer coming up too. So I mean, yeah, I thought uh, we were supposed to get that one on April second. That's what I've heard. But... Yeah, that's what I heard. Like, like I wasn't sure. It was gonna, I don't know if it's ever been confirmed when we we're gonna get one. But like, supposedly it's early this month. Yeah. So, a- any listeners out there, um, keep your eye out for the Thor trailer and. Uh, if you guys want to hear us talk about our thoughts on that, we'll definitely be happy to do so. Um, but I think we should start wrapping things up here, guys. So if you guys want to make any last remarks, uh, do it. I will. You guys need to guess. This is not uh, Iron Man related, but guess where my last quote is going to come from and then I'm out. <laughs> I don't know yep. where the hell it's going to come from. You have a train to catch. I'm racking my brain, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's a CBM. Come on, dude. Come on. Greatest, one of the greatest of all time. Train. You have a train to catch. It sounds very familiar, man. I can't put I can't put something on it, though. CBM fight scene on a train. I'll throw that out, hint out there. Is that uh, Captain America, the first Avenger? Nah. <laughs> CBM fight scene on a train. Spider-Man 2. Oh, yeah, dude. Doc Ock. <laughs> of course. Of course. Oh, dude, I feel like a piece of shit now. Dude, uh, like, as soon as I heard it and we were finishing, I was like, man, I gotta end up with that. So, nice. Which is funny, because there's a train right outside my uh, work. You guys can hear that. But I just have a heavy glass on the other side of this wall, so. Alright, man. So, any, any, any last words, John? 
Nah, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm glad uh, glad we got to do this. We haven't done one in a long time. I was jonesing for it, so glad I get glad I talk to you guys again. Yeah, definitely. Durf? Well, I don't know how the fuck I'm supposed to follow that up, but... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm a blast deal with John. I was jonesing for this. Uh, can't wait to see Iron Man 3. Guys, uh, I don't even... Don't even have words to say how excited I am for this movie. <laughs> yeah, man, same here. Um, well, guys, if you've listened thus far, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we know this was a long one. Uh, we hope you listened to all of it. I guess we'll understand if you didn't, but if you didn't, honestly, kind of a fuck you to you. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um... You listen to this part, like, you're not listening anyway, so yeah, yeah fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but... Hell, I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm so glad we finally got a chance to. Uh, it's been about a month since we did the last one. Um, but, hell, Iron Man 3 comes out May 3rd. Get your ass in the seat, and um, you'll hear from us next time. Take it easy.